The UAW is also fighting for higher wages at the jointly owned Altium Cells EV battery plant in Lordstown. Those negotiations began back in January and are drawing a lot of interest in the industry because it is the first of its kind contract. In this in-depth report, Chris Serenelli looks at how this road to a new contract could affect future battery plants yet to be built. In just about any negotiation, wages are the main talking point. Up until a couple weeks ago, the wages at Altium were a sore spot for the head of the national UAW, calling them poverty wages. Workers at Altium were making $16.50 an hour on average. That has since been up to $18 an hour. But the union will be fighting for higher wages, that of the more typical American auto worker. The automakers, though, are making the argument that the battery plant workers are doing a different kind of work, only one part of the vehicle and not the final product. I think the challenge for the UAW is that it just can't expect the Detroit 3 to, uh, when they open a new EV facility, uh, for example, that they would automatically pay the UAW wage at that facility if they had a choice. In addition to working to get a competitive wage, the local union will also be looking to set a standard, a standard on safety. 21 News has reported extensively on a number of safety concerns at the Lordstown plant. Workers there told us the plant doesn't have safety showers or the proper protective equipment when being exposed to dangerous chemicals. At this point, OSHA has Altium under a microscope. The issue you have at the Altium plant, while it may have dangerous conditions, I'm not sure it reaches that threshold of being the imminent or, you know, almost unavoidable loss of life or limb. There's certainly a lot of issues with lithium ion batteries and it can be a factor in bargaining and everybody wants to be safe. You want to go to work and come home the same way you came in. In July, the UAW released what's called a white paper regarding the Altium cells plant. Much of that document highlighted the dangerous working conditions there. But like any white paper, the union also offered a solution. In this case, the UAW pointed out the upcoming UAW-GM National Labor Agreement, saying it will be a, quote, highly successful model for protecting safety that could be applied at Ultium Cells Lordstown and other battery cell manufacturers. And ultimately, what the UAW will be able to accomplish in this first-of-its-kind contract will be the difference when it comes to attracting other EV workers to unionize. If they don't get some big gains here, if they don't have a very solid representation of those workers, and not just the ones at the Ultimate Plant in Ohio, but all battery workers going forward, uh, they're going to see that as a threat to their existence. The pressure is on for the union to perform in these talks, but some auto analysts believe, despite the pressure, they are in the driver's seat. The companies are vulnerable. I mean, competition is relentless. People have alternatives in terms of where they want to go to buy electrical vehicles, and they don't have the inventory of electrical vehicles that they do in internal combustion vehicles. So what they're concerned about is losing um, their customers on a more or less permanent basis to their competitors. Automakers are sure to point out the hefty price tag associated with converting operations to all electric. Predictions for that cost are approaching tens of billions of dollars. In these first of their kind talks, neither side wants to lose the footprint they have in the auto industry. But to what extent will each go to get what they want? And more importantly, to what expense? With more local news, I'm Chris Serenelli.